Well, hey, Man Cave Inns. This is Bob from the Bob's End Scale Man Cave. And today, we got a review. Something came in the box here just the other day. My late Christmas present. And it is going to be the Kato 20th Century Limited Set. This is the 9-car set. I've also got the 4-car add-on set. And the two locomotives that come with it in DCC. So, without the sound, but maybe that's uh, later on. So let's go take a look at this beautiful set and what comes with it. The first thing we're going to look at is these E7As. It's a two locomotive set, number 4008 and number 4022, and the Century Limited. These are post 1948 locomotives, so everything we see here is in that era after 1948. Locomotive has a tag in there addressing which uh, decoder they have in there, a Digitrax DN163K0D decoder, uh, default set to address 3. You can take a look at uh, the full instructions on their website. Okay, we have here uh, number 4022. An E7A and you can see the New York Central logo on the side the nice paint banner on the, on the side as well kind of a kind of a jagged uh, Z shape right there um, nice uh, gray uh, trucks on the side uh, the standard um, kind of look for uh, a Kato E7 or most of their stuff anyway it kind of looks about the same uh, kind of trucks that you would expect on other models as well. Uh, on the front you can see uh, the New York Central logo, uh, the nice uh, pinstriping on the front, um, a nose headlight, two front windows. I do not see any uh, windshield wipers on those. You got the uh, two horns up on top, nice uh, kind of a grayish green I think it's kind of, kind of like a dark gray more of a close-up look at uh, the front logo you definitely can read it you can see those uh, details I was talking about on the trucks and that whole side is uh, really nice Uh, the bottom is a uh, pretty uh, standard for a Kato um, locomotive. Not a lot of detail on the bottom at all. And who really looks at the bottom on a regular basis? But there you go. You can see all those uh, little details as much as you want. All in all, not a bad looking locomotive. Okay, we're going to take a look at the headlight, and we're turn that on. I have just a low light on this right now, and when you turn the headlight on, it's fairly bright. Not too bad in this uh, lighting scenario. I'm going to turn the light off, and I just have some extra small light in the room. But as you can see, that looks uh, fairly bright in here, and it looks uh, relatively bright inside the room as well. So put cover up some of that light and you can see that it glows pretty good. You can see the number boards and everything is just uh, nice. Okay, let's see how it goes with uh, the DCC and some of the speed control that it has with the Digitrax. I'm going to move this up and I'm at 5. Starts humming at 6 and moving. Here we're at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And in reverse, basically about the same. We're at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and stop. Stops pretty fast. Uh, the locomotive may 
need some uh, warming up, breaking in, all those kind of things to run a lot smoother. But uh, all in all, it uh, works just fine. Okay, the nine car set comes with, well, obviously nine cars. It also comes with a re-railer, 20th century limited re-railer, kind of represents or resembles the red carpet treatment that they gave to the 20th Century Limited on the train station platforms. Also comes with some display tracks, uh, a bumper for the end of the track, and inside these little pieces here, there's also uh, your trip pins and a end marker that uh, drill that you can drill in and put it at the end of your bumper track for your display. So there's some uh, options there. The set can also be lighted if you buy the optional lighted uh, kits. I'm not going to put any lights in this one right now for you. Uh, I've done that before. Same kind of set and setup as the Alaska set that I did a number of years ago. So I'm not going to redo how to put lights in one of these sets pretty darn easy, uh, but there's some modifications you kind of need to do to keep them lighted so they don't come loose. So there's all those little tricks and things to learn. But let's uh, take a look at these cars. The four car add-on set includes two sleepers, uh, the Chicago River and Powder River, uh, two 12 bedroom sleepers, Port of Boston and Port of Albany. Those are just an extra number of cars to increase your set to 13. On the back you also have a diagram of what the consist should look like with the four car add-ons in. Uh, these red ones here are where those uh, cars used to go in the consist normally. So you just add those in and you've got a full 20th Century Limited set. We have the United States Mail Railway Post Office car number 5017. And you can see there's uh, the doors on there, the detail on the trucks. Let me get a close up view here. See the window slats and the the mailbag hook on the side, step ladders, looks pretty uh, nice, and the baggage doors for the mail. Uh, the bottom is uh, pretty uneventful, even though it says made in Japan on the bottom. Um, that's fine. Cotto couplers, six trucks, and you can see the the copper pickups for electricity to power the lights that uh, you can install separately. And there you can see the, the end and how it uh, looks. All in all, not too bad. Okay, we have the George Washington Bridge. It's a 442 sleeper car. This would have sat behind the RPO. And one of the other sleeper cars out of the other package. Um, pretty much the same kind of details. This one has a little bit more piping and stuff on the bottom. Air tanks and those kind of things. The top is pretty much uneventful. And you can kind of see inside there some of the detail inside the uh, inside the car, all the seats and stuff. And okay, this is the Lakeshore Lounge car, and uh, a little bit different looking than the sleeper cars. Since this traveled between New York and Chicago. A lot of people like to sleep, um, so it looks pretty good. I like the doors on the sides, uh, the antenna on top, 
or whatever that is actually. <laughs> and then there's uh, some detail on the bottom. This one here seems like it has an open doorway, so you can kind of see on the inside. It is uh, not open on the other side. This is number car 474. It's a kitchen dormitory. So you got uh, your uh, kitchen personnel probably would sleep here and cook all the food for the diner car. And you got some uh, smokestacks and air vents and so forth on the on the roof. This also has some details on the bottom. Not a whole lot. The ends are open, like in that other car. So I guess that is kind of planned. So it uh, adds a little bit more uh, detail to it. Okay, this is the diner car number four four hundred one and uh, typical uh, kind of like an open window a bunch of tables on the inside can't really see the tables too much but they are there well, maybe you can see a little bit in there uh, details on the bottom or rather um, okay got some air tanks and so forth uh, the doors on the end are closed on this one, on, on both of them. And these, this car would sit behind, uh, or actually in front of two or three other sleepers from the other set. This is one of the 12 bedroom sleepers. Port of Buffalo. And you can kind of see in there, there's a lot of little tiny rooms if you look close. Um, it's kind of hard to really see in this video, but they are there. Um, the back door is open. Uh, this door is not. A lot of details on the bottom as well. This car also can be lighted. Not a lot of roof detail. All in all, not a bad car. Okay, what you've all been waiting for is the observation car at the end of the train, Hickory Creek. This is a, a nice place to be at the end of the train sometimes. You get to see where you've been. Got a nice round end to the car. It'll look a little light up here. I do not believe that lights up, but we'll see. Um, one thing about this car is it comes pre-lit, so they put a special lighting uh, card in here, so everything's lit up from the back all the way up to about here, and so everything uh, looks pretty nice. We'll uh, show you that in a little bit. But yeah, nice observation car with probably a couple uh, little areas there for sleeping or meeting rooms of some sort or whatever. Not a lot of detail on the bottom, kind of standard details. And the back door is open. You can kind of see inside there. Okay, the lights are on. I just have a little bit of ambient light in here but you can definitely see all the lighting. You can actually see what's inside there. I'm gonna kind of zoom in so you can see some of the detail. You can see some tables in there, some chairs, um, all the little things you kind of expect inside an observation car in the end of it. So they went all out and they really detailed the inside of it. I don't think they really did a lot of painting and make some colors jump out at you. You could probably pull this thing apart, no problem, and paint them yourself if you want to get some detail color into your uh, model. Uh, there is a marker light on the side. The end logo 
lights up but uh, there's a little light that was up here toward the top that I was talking about that kind of looked like a light that does not light up and as you can see this looks really nice from the back at the end of the train a nice well-lit observation car I'm gonna test out two different railers that uh, are out there this one here I believe is like a Trix uh, re-railer and sometimes it uh, seems to work okay sometimes it don't so I'm going to test this out Oh, and now that, that works. Now I'm going to use the one that comes with the Kato set. Let's see how that one works. Sets down pretty easily. And it goes on goes on real nice. Uh, one thing I notice about these is that they are a little bit higher up on this end and so you get I think a little bit too much angle as it comes down and hits the, the rail so you get some uh, rolling stock that just do not want to um, get off of this uh, railer and because it hits the tracks or something like that. This one here, as you can tell, is a lot um, shorter. So it gives you a better angle getting onto the track. And so I actually like this one. It uh, um, seems like it would handle even the really long stuff that uh, the wheels are far back from the end of the car, um, so you wouldn't hit your uh, trip pins on the track ties, and um, I think it would uh, work a little bit better than these other ones that are out there. Well, Mancavians, that's been my review of this uh, 20th Century Limited from Kato, the whole set, the locomotives, the nine and the four car add-on set. Pretty good locomotive. Um, it should run really good for a long time. Uh, I need to uh, break them in a little bit. That's always going to be needing to be done. There's also uh, a really nice re-railer that I like. That comes with the set. The nine car set anyway. And uh, it's an overall good product from Cotto. They did some new retooling, from what I hear, and so there's a lot of good details. The, the nice light in the observation car, that was all put in there. Uh, everything works really, really nice, and it should add uh, a lot to your collection or look great on your layout. For those of you wondering why there is an F right there, stands for front. Yeah, I know. Kind of obvious, isn't it? Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Check out these videos over here. Also, click on the links down below to follow me on social media. And leave a comment. Tell me what you liked. And as always, Mancavians, happy model railroading and stay off those tracks. Bye.